Welcome to another Photo Focus conversation about photography. Photo Focus has provided free photographic education to our readers for 21 years. I'm Kevin Ames. I'm the director of content for Photo Focus, and my guest today is Sir Dramelli, world renowned fine art photographer who has his work in galleries literally worldwide. Welcome, Serge. Thank you, Kevin, for having me. You're most welcome. It's good to see you. Good to Where see are you. you right now? You're in LA? I'm in Los Angeles, yes. Awesome. Awesome. So how long have you been how long have you been taking pictures? Um, so it's been 14 years and um, and I uh, I started because I was a salesman. I was a vice president of a, of a web agency doing really well financially, but very sad because I've always wanted to be an artist and I was not doing it. And so, you know, on the side, uh, in the evenings, I started, you know, taking Paris because my work uh, led me to uh, be in the nicest, you know, by the Eiffel Tower, the Opera, the Saint-Germain-des-Prés, the Alex on the Third Bridge. I was always, you know, in the tourist area. So after work, I started taking photos and did that for many, many years until I got, you know, a book I, deal. I've been out. to Paris. It's, it's absolutely lovely. So did you start in Paris? Yeah, I started in Paris. Uh, yeah, I started in Paris. I moved to the U.S. five years ago, uh, but I started fine art 15 years ago, and uh, most of it, the first five years, was Paris exclusively. Well, why don't we jump into some of your photographs? I'm looking yes. at a bridge right now. Yeah, so that, that is kind of like the first sunset that I kind of managed to get okay. It's, it's not really a usable photo. If you look, I don't see if you can see it on videos, but it's very noisy. But this is kind of like the first photo where I got like really excited because it was an amazing sunset and I sort of, I think I shot this with a Canon US 350, uh, you know, 15 years ago and sort of got me excited into the fine art, you know, uh, one of my favorite bridges in Paris. Uh, the, the next photo is, uh, is black and white. I've done a lot of black and white in Paris because my first book, which is here, uh, is a black and, we'll and white We'll take book. a look at the book later, okay? Okay. All right, so uh, I, you know, I, I love black and white. I uh, studied a lot of Ansel Adams black and white. So this is the Arc de Triomphe in Paris. I was so happy because usually it's crowded and that night was, there was some kind of rugby match and it was kind of empty and the moon lines up right above the Eiffel Tower and you know, it was kind of like, I've been trying to reproduce this shot for 14 years and I've not been able to. You know, sometime you come at the right time, at the right place, everything is perfect and you get the shot. And it's kind of hard sometimes to reproduce. Um, it's awesome, show. really a wonderful, one of the best photographs I've seen of the Arc de Triomphe. Thank you. I, uh, I appreciate it. Yeah, it, it's, uh, it's one of these things, you know, I think photography is all about timing, meaning you can be walking all day long in Paris and then you are, you know, you, there's an amazing sunset and you're in an amazing location. And in three minutes, you get like fine art photos that's going to stay with you your entire life. When you took a thousand during the day, that's completely unusable. You know what I mean? It's yeah. really right time, right place. You know, uh, this is a photo of my favorite part of Montmartre called Montmartre. Uh, and I love that sort of leading line, you know, going to the Sacré Coeur. It, it's it's an end of afternoon photo, which is very unusual for me. Uh, but, you know, I sort of desaturated, made it a bit more dramatic. It's one of my best setting photos in gallery. Um, so uh, this, a, a lot of people ask me, what's your favorite photo you ever taken? And I always answer this one. Why? It's very personal. One of the reasons, and I think it's, uh, you have this a lot also in movies where uh, this also was really hard to get. Now it's full of graphic. It's almost impossible to get because I shot this about 10 years ago. And uh, having nobody in the stairs and having such a sunset, it was just like one of these perfect moments. It's got leading lines. It's got like a interesting foreground, middle and background. For me, this is really Paris, you know, uh, the local Paris, and um, and it's been used in two book covers. So I'm very attached to this photo, and I just really like it a lot. Again, from the uh, Montmartre. Yeah. It's lovely. And, uh, it's absolutely lovely. I love the colors and the tones. What else have you got? All right. Uh, so this is one of, I did a lot of panorama work, and this is the Louvre, you know, and uh, I always, when I, you know, when I do panoramas, I always kind of try to get something interesting on the left side, you know, sort of like have, a, have an anchor point from where to look. So I, I waited for these lights to come on. It was, again, one of these times when 
And we still have some sunset going on when they turn on the light. And when I shoot Paris, I like to shoot within the first eight minutes that they turn on the light because it's not too hot yet. So the dynamic range is not too crazy. And uh, exactly at that time. So the light are, you know, like for example, the building is not burned yet by the lights. But you still get the sunset. So that's the Louvre in Paris. Um, that's the IMP entrance, isn't it? It was quite controversial at the time, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. unless I'm missing my guess, this is the flying buttresses of Notre Dame. That's right. That's that's what's missing now. <laughs> that's one of my uh, Notre Dame has been a subject of mine for many many years. I've shot it. I think I have like five photos of Notre Dame in galleries being selling, and they sell even better now that it's burned down, which is sad. But it's being rebuilt at a very fast pace. I was there a few weeks ago. I couldn't believe how much people were working on it, and they raised a, a billion dollar overnight to rebuild it. And honestly, when you come and see it. All you see is, the, you know, the roof is missing and, you know, that beautiful, um, uh, we call it the fletch, the arrow uh, that, that fell down. Uh, this is, uh, so this is something that I've only managed to get a couple of times, which is using an ND filter, uh, an ND10 filter on a sunset. Uh, so it's got a very magenta look to it because it was a very magenta sunset. But I just loved, you know, I think this is like a minute exposure on a sunset. So you get like this very, you know, silky clouds and and flat water, I I just really enjoy what ND filters do to photography, you know, but I usually do black and white, it's very unusual I do, uh, I do color, and this one and another one I might show you is some of the best color sunset I've done. It's lovely, it's lovely, and of course the whole world misses Notre Dame. I was there a few years ago, and what an absolutely beautiful church. I was able to go inside during mass, and really, uh, it's it's a once in a lifetime experience, and I'm glad that oh, we did it. Oh, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. It's 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 very spiritual. It's so much history. It just breathes history like crazy. I hope it's they're going to restore it to how it was. I um, think they will. I think the world demands it pretty much. Yeah, yeah. So then the next, you know, shooting the Eiffel Tower is something I've been working on. This is just one from the Eiffel Tower that I kind of like, you know, with you. This is, uh, the, the, I'm on the Alexander the Third Bridge, which is, has these beautiful lamps. And, you know, wanted to do the frame of the frame of the Eiffel Tower. Again, you know, using this trick of shooting within the first eight to 10 minutes, uh, you know, so that it's not too, too, too contrasty. Uh, this was kind of a nice blue hour. There was no sunset that day. Um, let me see what else I got for you guys. Oh, this is a funny story. Uh, the small man you see on the left side is Scott Kelby. Uh, I was, um, I had never been to the Mont Saint-Michel, which is this crazy place. And I left him in a photo so you can see for scale. And we, um, he wanted to, uh, to shoot the Mont Saint-Michel, so he called me up. He says, pick me up in the airport and let's drive directly to Mont Saint-Michel. And we had pouring rain all the way. We arrived there and boom, everything was got cleared and we got that shot. This place is like straight up Game of Thrones. It's unbelievable. It's un I couldn't believe it. We almost got caught in, in uh, quicksands that day, uh, but uh, it was more fun than anything. Well, it's lovely. I mean, it, and the scale is really great. That's a wonderful thing to put in. Now, in your, is this in the galleries? No, this one's not. Okay. If you were to put this in the gallery, just for our readers, would you uh, retouch Scott out? No, I, I think I would just leave it as such. I just love the way it is. Great. What's next? All right. All right. Then we have uh, this is a uh, this is uh, a pano. I'm always trying to do like frame in a frame stuff, you know. And uh, I love this bridge was uh, built in the spirit of the Eiffel Tower. So I thought, oh, if I could just, I've always wanted to dream of making a frame in a frame of the Eiffel Tower with the. It's called the Bihakem Bridge. I for many years I thought it was the same engineers that did the, uh, uh, the you know, the that it was Mr. Eiffel, Gustave Eiffel, who built it, but it was not. Um, but some of the engineers that worked on the Eiffel Tower worked on that bridge, and it was an homage to the bridge. So it's not an easy, uh, if you go there, you'll see it's, this photo it is not that easy to catch. But, you know, I like it because of the leading lines, uh, you know, same thing, you know, it's not the night yet. I never shoot with black sky. Um, and it's one of my best setting photos in gallery, too. Well, why is it you don't shoot with black skies? I mean, I've got my reasons, but what are yours? Oh. Honestly, uh, I kind of change on this, but mainly because of contrast. Uh, you know, heavy, heavy contrast at night. 
which is sometimes, uh, you know, uh, honestly, the camera has gotten way better over the last three, four years. I mean, since I've been shooting with Sony, um, it's been a lot better. And um, I just, so, you know, I like that there's drama in the sky. That's the main reason, really. I like that something's happening there. So if it's black and something's happening, which I'll show you later on, then I'm shooting it like Milky Way or, you know, stars or some kind of clouds formation. I'll do it. You know, it's got, but yeah, pure black, I find it boring. Well, it looks really good. What, what else do you have for us? All uh, right. Uh, this is, um, again, this famous bridge, the Alexander the uh, Third. You know, I just love that. It's very rare to get a cool sunset in Paris. This one was really cool. And I got the sun, you know, right by the statue there. I, you know, this is for me really Paris. I love your scenes of the Eiffel Tower in Paris. Uh, it's, it's amazing. Everywhere you go in Paris, you can see it. It's kind of like it peeps up in the background. But one of the photographs I saw of yours that I really love, Serge, is the one of Napoleon's opera in the foreground and the Eiffel Tower clear in the background with the sun. That's right. Here it is. It is amazing. Where did you find a vantage point to make this photograph? Uh, from the um, uh, department store called the Printemps, they have a terrace. The only way to get, you know, the opera, that's the back of the opera and the Eiffel Tower, was to, to make a panel. I think this is like a six or seven panel, but uh, really enjoy the process. Well, can we talk a little bit about your fine artwork and, um, you know, how, you, how did you get into galleries? Talk about what inspired you to do fine art. Well, I, I, you know, I've been shooting Paris for five years. I've seen this yellow corner gallery network gallery because they're everywhere in Paris. And I've always dreamed of being there. It's a, kind of a long story how I got in. But let's just say that when I blew up on social media with this kind of photography and passed 100,000 followers on YouTube, that's when uh, uh, they, the gallery accepted to work with me. They tested me on three photos and eventually took 70 out of me. And they, I've also introduced them to this German publisher called Ten House which I've done uh, six books with. And uh, so they co-publish, Yellow Corner co-publishes everything with Yellow Corner, uh, with uh, Ten House, the German publisher. So they publish my books and they have my stuff in galleries. So your books, are these coffee table books? Yes, there are. Uh, this is my first one. It's Paris Black and White. Uh, you know, there are between 40 to $60, depends, you know, where hold you find it. them. Can you hold it still for us? Sure. And, uh, you know, they are... About uh, 150 to 200 pages. Uh, and uh, this one is, yeah, that's my first one. This is uh, the first, uh, I want to say, six or seven years. This one came out in 2012, I think. Seven years of shooting Paris and, you know, my best work there. And um, it sold out completely. It's really hard to find. I hope they reprint it again. Uh, that's so, amazing. Uh, that's amazing. And how many other books do you have? So I have a total of uh, six. I only have four to show you here. But in sequence, the, I did a New York book in black and white, which I don't have. It's also ran out. My first color book was Venice in color, uh, which I did a couple of years after. So I did Paris in black and white, New York in black and white, Venice. And, um, and then the next one, and this one I love, is Los Angeles. I go out and shoot every other night. I would say at least three times per week. So I really had something to make a book. I've explored, you know, LA has great sunsets. So, and some great nature. And there are some cool places when you know where to go. So I'm, you know, kind of happy with my LA books, one of my favorite. And, um, and then my publisher says, okay, we have Paris and New York in black and white. Let's redo them in color with completely brand new photos. So, and that's my two layers. Of, that's my New York book uh, in, um, in color in on New York and I have Paris in color coming out. It actually came out. I just, my publisher didn't send my, my copies yet. Publishers so. are like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it came out just before the summer. Everybody's on vacation and they didn't send it to me. So, but it, here we are. Well, these are really amazing and they're absolutely brilliant, brilliant photographs. People want to get started in doing fine art. I know a lot of photographers that want to do that. Is there a way that they can actually get started? How? Yeah, I actually did. I have like a whole conference called a webinar on the subject where I go really in details on my story. You know, the the three main things, there's three things that really changed my life as a photographer. 
And that really got me into fine art at, at this level. And I really go in details about it. Well, good. So uh, where could people, are you, are you going to have this webinar before too much longer? Yes, I'm going to have this webinar and uh, I guess you guys are going to share it. So uh, you will be able to see it uh, through, uh, through you guys, which I really appreciate. And I hope you enjoyed it. It's, um, I've got great feedback on, on this webinar. I put a lot of work into it. You can see the link right here on the page where you found this video. So I do hope that you'll take advantage of it. And where can people get your books, Serge? Honestly, the easiest thing is on Amazon. You just type my name, Serge Remily, on Amazon, you know, books, and you'll find all six there, and you can order them. It's the, you can find them in Barton Novels, but it's, you know, uh, a lot of them are out of stock. I mean, Amazon is taking over the world of book sales, you know, so um, Amazon never runs out of stock. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that the truth? So yeah. on the webinar, do you have any videos or anything that – is it just the webinar or is there a possibility that people could find videos that you've done that would help them on some of your lighting techniques, your panorama techniques? Yeah. And, I mean, and, I and go, again, I, about I, fine art photography. Yeah, I go in details on some of the techniques on the webinar itself. But you also, I mean, you, you know, I do two videos per week on my YouTube channel. I got, uh, you know, one of the biggest uh, YouTube channel on Lightroom in the world with almost 600,000 followers. So every Tuesday and Friday I post a video on you know photography and post processing and i so, really uh, want to thank you for being with us serge this has really been a lot of fun for me and i've really enjoyed getting to know you this way and i look forward to uh seeing you maybe at photoshop world sometime yeah thank you so much kevin i appreciate it you're welcome i'm kevin ames this is photo focus with serge ramelli thank you for joining us for this conversation and we'll see you again soon